Part of me was worried, like, if you're training too hard, does it make you die younger? You know, it's like if you've been training so hard since you're like, whatever, 12 or 15, and you're going for 20 years for that elite level, but I guess you're really optimizing your body too for performance. Your body's very adaptable. And so the thing is, I'm, I'm sure there's the, the outliers that that is true. But if you, again, look at studies that are published looking at generally like, hmm. you know, average population of like, there's a French um, Olympian athlete study. And then there's a, like, are the there's another Olympian athlete study that looks at multiple different Olympic yeah. athletes from around the world. Um, and then just looking at some of the studies, uh, looking at people that have an elite level of cardiorespiratory fitness, yes. right? So that would be your ability to take in oxygen during maximal exercise as measured by VO2 max. Um, there's studies showing that people that are in the elite level, so these are the elite athletes, like they're in like the top 2.3% of VO2 wow. max, have an 80% reduction in all-cause mortality compared to people at the low end, like the, the people with low uh, VO2 max, 80%. And what's even more mind-blowing is that, first of all, the elite people, so people that are like, again, these are the athletes, if you compare them to people that are like me, like high, I have a high VO2 max from my age, I'm not, I'm not elite, like they still had a 20% lower all-cause mortality wow. than, so it seems like there's no limit, right? You keep going up. Um, but the people with the low VO2 max, those people had a mortality that was comparable or worse to people that were smokers had hypertension, diabetes. Come on. I know. It's because being sedentary, like not being physically active is a disease. It is a disease. I, I think it should be talked about as being a disease because it has the same mortality risk as people that are not, I mean, people that have diseases that we identify as disease, wow. right? Like hypertension, sure. diabetes. What do, you, what do you consider as uh, sedentary? What, type, what is a sedentary lifestyle? Good question. Um, typically, I mean, it, it, what I'm talking about is the context of studies. And so typically what would be defined as a sedentary lifestyle is someone that has no leisure time, physical activity, so they don't play tennis or pickleball or soccer or basketball or baseball or any type of leisure type of, you know, hockey, whatever, mm -hmm. fill in the blank. Kickball. Um, kickball, yeah, yeah. handball. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, or, you know, they don't go to the gym, they don't run, so they don't identify themselves as taking time to engage in right. some type of physical exercise. They get up, they go to take a shower, they walk to get food, right. whatever, but they, right. they go to their school or they go to their office, but that's it. That's it. And that's, that would be considered sedentary. There's They're actually, getting like maybe a thousand steps a day, 2,000 steps a day maybe. What is that like? Yeah, I mean, it depends on if, you know, maybe they are walking. If they walk their dog more, they're getting more steps, sure, sure. you know. I mean, I think that's better than nothing. It's not a brisk walk. It's not like a speed walk. <laughs> but it's like, most yeah. of the time, people walking their dogs are not doing brisk oh, walks. Yeah, they're stopping. You're yeah, moving. yeah. So um, probably I would say that... That's a, I wonder if I wonder if scientists actually ask them, do you walk your dog? I don't know. That might be considered sedentary. Mm -hmm. I would I would call it sedentary. Right, because be it's honest. not a brisk. It's not an intense activity. Right, and I do think I think that ten thousand steps should re be replaced with like the ten minute of like vigorous exercise, like more like a day. What do you need a day? Ten minutes of vigorous exercise. That's what I think. Not ten thousand no, steps. No, not ten thousand steps. Really? Yes, because it comes down to like you can walk slow. Right? And it mm -hmm. also takes, you know how long it takes? It takes a long time. It takes, a it takes long, like hours. Yeah, like an hour and a half or something. <laughs> like it's not, you know, and I just told you that, you know, 10 body weight squats every every 45 minutes for an eight hour, you know, work week is better at glucose regulation than 30 minute walk. Wow. Right? So I, I do think that um, the, the 10,000 10, 10, steps a day should be replaced with 10 minutes of vigorous exercise. I personally feel that way. But like the sedentary like aspect, you know, we're talking about being sedentary. There was a classic study that was um, ben, Dr. Ben Levine. He was on my podcast. Um, he's, he's really the leader in how the heart adapts to mm. stress, whether it's exercise or space or whatever. He's, a, he's like a juggernaut in mm. the exercise physiology world. And his mentors had done a study when he was a young boy where they took these like 10 guys and measured, you know, their cardiorespiratory fitness and a variety of cardiovascular endpoints. And, and then um, they put them under bed rest for three weeks. So you're talking about what's being sedentary. At the extreme level of being sedentary, we're talking, these guys were in bed 
for three weeks. Using it, they, they used a catheter to go to the bathroom. No like way. Yeah, no, there was. That would drive me nuts. No, it totally would. But these, there's ten. Pe- there are people that volunteered to do this. They must have got paid a lot of money for that. I don't know. That's. I don't know. I, I agree. Three with you. weeks. Three weeks. You couldn't even get up to go couldn't to the bathroom. Couldn't even get up to go to the bathroom. This is the extreme. They wanted to really understand uh-huh. what full sedentaryism what happened? did. Oh, so their cardiorespiratory fitness was just. It went. It was just shot to the ground. I mean, it was terrible after three weeks. But here's the real kicker. So, so Ben Levine was a young boy when this was done. This was done by his mentors, okay? You know, fast forward 30 years, okay? They found these same 10 guys. They found these same 10 guys, okay? Now here's Ben. Ben, this is Ben's being involved in this study. Gets these, they get these same guys and they measure what 30 years, because they have all their data from oh, before man. the bed rest, yes. right? They measure what 30 years of aging does on their cardiovascular system. And do you want to know what is insane? Yes. 30 years of aging was not worse than what three weeks of bed rest did. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. It was not worse than three weeks of bed rest in terms of their cardiorespiratory fitness, which I personally think is one of the best markers for longevity that we can measure. 